clear them. But we still don't have any of these functionality. If we press this, nothing happens yet. So this one's going to be the inverse. And so it's gonna, if we, if we were to press it right now, it would change this to negative 985. If we press it again, it would be positive 985. So we'll go ahead and implement that one next. Back in our model. So else if caption equals equals plus over the minus. So here's where we're going to want to inverse our value. If it's negative, we want to make it a positive. If it's a positive, we want to make it a negative. So the way we can do that is we'll say self dot value equals we can check we can check if it's a negative already to make it a positive so if it's a negative already it's going to have the negative sign in front of it so in order to make it a positive we just take everything after the negative so we'll say We want everything from the the item at index one and then going forward using list notation. If the first item is a negative. So if the user clicks the inverse and the first part of our value is a negative, and we know it's a negative. We want to inverse that to a positive, so we take everything after the, the item at index 1. Otherwise, we want to put the negative in front of it, so we'll say the negative plus whatever the value is. So that should complete our, our inverse functionality. Let's test it out. So we put a 1 and then we hit the inverse. Now we have negative 1, hit it again, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So that's working. We'll try with some other numbers. And then I'm clear it. So we have that. Next, we'll move on to our percent. So the way the percent works um, on the calculator, let's say you have a 50, and then you hit the percent, then it converted to a percent as in decimal version. So it would be like a, a 0.05. So, going back to our model. So if the user clicks on the percent, um, actually first let's do the decimal, because that's going to be important in this case as well. So so when the user presses the decimal point we're going to want to insert the decimal so if they have 15 and they want to put 15.5 then they can do that here but we want to make sure that only one decimal place is, is allowed so they can do like 15.5 point 
6.3 or whatever. So we're going to want to check first if there's already a decimal. Um, so we're going to check that it, there's not a decimal in there. So if not, uh, in this case, the caption is the decimal. So if not caption in. So if there's not already a, a decimal in the value, we'll add the decimal to the value. We'll just add it at the end. So let's test that out. So we press it again, and as you can see, it doesn't work anymore, which is what we want. 14, 45.5, and they can't put another decimal, which is what we want. So now the decimal is working, and um, I had said we were going to do the percent, but let's actually do these first because these are simpler. So let's do the the simple arithmetic. The we'll start with the positive and the minus, and then multiplication and division. So going back to our model. And then, since we already checked for the clear, we already checked for the decimal, we already checked for the inverse, and for all of the numbers, and then we're going to check for the percent. For these, we're actually going to do something similar to what we did for the numbers and just use one condition for all, instead of checking whether it's plus, checking whether it's minus. We're just going to check, or after we check all of these other ones, then everything else would fall in these four. So that's going to be our the ending of our if block. So, so far we've had if, and then else if, else if, else if. And then at the very end, we're going to have an else. Because if it's not clear, if it's not inverse, percent, decimal, um, we're going to need to put equals in, and then if it's not a number, then it's going to be one of those operators, the plus, minus, multiply, division. So, so we're going to use just one block for all of them. We're going to need another instance variable over here for the operator to keep track of what it is. And then, since we're going to be adding and subtracting and multiplying, we're going to need two values actually instead of just the one. So we'll say we're going to have a previous value. So when the user clicks on one of the operators, we're going to store the current value that's being displayed in previous value and store the operator. And then the next value that they put in will be what's going to be the, the second part of the operation or the expression. So when they press one of the operators, we're going to store it. And then also now, since we have this operator and we have this previous value, when the user clicks clear, we want to reset those as well. So we'll do that now. We'll reset the previous value and we'll reset the op operator. So when they click clear, it's gonna reset everything. And going back to our operator, when they press one of the operators, it's going to store it and then it's going to store the current value under 
premium value.